Con Todos Press is not your typical publishing house. It was founded by Naive Reynoso, an award-winning journalist who wanted to create bilingual children's books that teach, entertain, and inspire. From the best-selling author of Be Bold, Be Brave, 11 Latinas Who Made U.S. History, and Fearless Trailblazers, 11 Latinos Who Made U.S. History, comes the newest addition to the Little Biographies for Bright Minds book series. Courageous History Makers, 11 women from Latin America who changed the world. Learn the real-life stories of women like artist Frida Kahlo, activist Rigoberta Menchu, athlete Caterini Varguin, and many, many more. Her new book, Courageous History Makers, 11 Women from Latin America Who Changed the World, is out now. Please welcome to the show, Naive Reynoso. Thank you so much for waking up. I know you're on the opposite coast, but we appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. You know, I'm uh, uh, my children are much older. They're 11 and 14, but I remember as a new mom struggling to find books that spoke to their culture. Um, and I wish I had known about this earlier, but, you know, <laughs> you've created sort of this, this publishing house, and it's called Con Todo, which means everything right. in English. So, with, so why, with everything. Yes, yeah, so, so why call it that? Well, I really wanted to emphasize that everything is possible with hustle and heart, and that's why the logo is, is you know, muscle, and there's a heart in the logo, because I believe that anything is possible with hustle and heart. Yes, there's a lot of things that we want to achieve as a community, as a Latino community, but we really need to put the work in, and we have to do the work ourselves. Um, but we also have to do it with passion and with purpose. So that is the meaning behind my company, Con Todo Press, and that is, you know, that is what I want to tell little kids that anything is possible, and that's why I always have a call to action mm -hmm. um, in every single one of my books. I love this because you created uh, you created Con Todo and released another book about Latinx women making history here in the U.S. You did this uh, back in 20, 2018, correct? So my company started in 2018, but I released my first book that you see on screen, Be Bold, Be Brave, April of 2019. So in essence, my company has only been out there for a little over two years, and I think we've accomplished so much. We have... You know, I've donated tons of books. I've been able to read to a lot of schools and, and um, libraries. And it's just growing even more. And now I'm even taking on other authors. And I wonder, I, I, I was bringing up the date for a couple of reasons, because what, what was particular about that moment in time? Or what was your experience like trying to publish these types of books elsewhere? Had you tried to do that? And what was that experience I had like? Right. I had not tried to traditionally publish. Um, and the reason I didn't is because I felt the urgency of getting these books out now. And if I wanted to get these books out now, I knew that I had to do the work that I had to self-publish. Mm -hmm. And even though the first book came out in 2019, the work really started years before. Sure. Um, there was a couple of moments, watershed mo moments, that really made me uh, want to create this company in 2015, when, and when my community was called Bad Hombres, I have a son. That was very hurtful for me to hear that. Um, when we were called gang members and criminals. So that was, that was kind of what planted the seed. But then when I walked into a big, the biggest uh, bookstore that exists in the, in the United States, and I was trying to find books that gave him the other side of the coin, that, that showed my son that he wasn't a, a bad hombre, right? Um, I was hard pressed to find those books and it really, really broke my heart because I had never put myself in the shoes of a little child mm -hmm. walking into a bookstore or a library and trying to find books that reflect themselves, right? So that made me realize like I need to do something about that. So it took me years, um, you know, because I had to write the book, I had to sure. do research on how to self-publish. So by the time that the book actually came out, the first one, it was 2019, but really the journey started in 2015. Right, and it's so easy to think like, oh, look at these pictures, I look so happy and wonderful, but it really does take a lot of grit uh, to, to do the type, this type of work. What do you say to critics who say, we don't need a publishing house or a publisher that just caters to black and brown voices? Because this is something I have heard, and I am, I am not a published author. <laughs> Right. Well, the the statistics are out there. You know, there was a study that said that only 5.5% of children's books have Latino main characters. 
And Latin, the Latino population is a little over 18% of the population. So you could see the disparity there. It's very, very clear. And it's, you know, that's why I'm, I'm taking matters into my own hands because the publishing industry maybe doesn't understand because mm -hmm. maybe they have not, the people that are making the decisions haven't walked into a bookstore and haven't tried to find a book for their child to, um, you know, to show them the other side of our community that we're not criminals and, and and all of these horrible messagings that we've been listening about our community for so many years. And I see that you, you show, you know, Latinos in media and right there, there's a huge gap mm -hmm. as well. And in film, we just saw the Oscar nominations. There was not one Latino nominated in the major categories. And that is heartbreaking. We are, we almost one out of every five people in this country is a Latino, but we're still invisible. We're still marginalized. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe that in 2021, we're still having to have these conversations. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought up the role um, or not the role, but the current state of Latinx in media, because I, I think to your point, we've seen that we continue to grow in numbers, yet the, the representation is still needed both in front of the camera and behind the camera or in front of the right. page or behind the page. Um, do you have any collaborations that you want, that you're, you're hoping for or currently working on? Because I think the collaborations are a huge part of amplifying our voices. Right. Well, there are a couple of things in the works that I can't talk about right now that I'd be so excited to talk about in a few months. Um, but my company, what I'm doing, I am actually collaborating with other authors of color because I can only do so much. I wrote the first five books, but I, if I want to keep um, you know, growing my business and scaling and really putting the word out there and producing books that represent people of color, not just Latinos, but women, Asian communities, African communities, Indian communities. I need to take on more, more authors. And that's the work that I'm putting in now. And I'm just extremely happy because I feel like my experience as, as a journalist has allowed me and helped me to be able to, um, you know, to grow this business. And what you're seeing now are, those are future titles. The image it. you see now. Yeah, the image you see now is uh, about a Cuban author that I signed um, wanted to write a book in memory of Cuba. The one that you're seeing now, Courageous mm -hmm. Camila, it's about a little Latina girl that loves sports because I also feel that there's a lack of representation of Latinos in sports mm -hmm. and Latinas in sports. Um, and that that is just heartbreaking as well. So we're not just invisible in media, but we're invisible in sports I'm too. So I have a daughter and, and she's into sports and I see how much it's affected her, mm -hmm. affected her in a positive way. Yes. So Latinas need to see themselves in, in, in roles in sports. So that book, Courageous Camila, is about a little girl that does uh, surfing, jujitsu, skateboarding. I love it. Because I want to encourage girls to pursue uh, sports as well. And I know that you're setting a good uh, role model in sports because, you know, I, I hear, according to your Instagram, you love a good Peloton. So oh, yes. uh, I just need to know <laughs> what your screen name is so I can see you on the leaderboard. Show that picture because this woman literally uh. does it <laughs> all. I love it, girl. I love it. So yeah, my screen name is at Naibe. You can't miss me. All right. I, I, I love my Robin Arzon classes. Sure, sure. <laughs> Naibe, thank you so much for joining us this morning thank and for you. doing this important work. We really appreciate it. And you can go find this book now and go to her website. It's really wonderful. Thank you.